What screams at night in the heart of the Appalachian Mountains? Does a dark curse still stalk through the blue hills? Have you ever seen a cougar bigger than a horse? Today we test the believability of the wampus cat. Welcome to Believing the Bizarre, where we dive into the unknown and the unusual, and tell you whether or not we find it believable. That's right. So this is an u- d- unusual creature. An unusual creature. Yeah. Yeah. Bigger than a cougar. Bigger than a horse. <laughs> I don't know about bigger than a horse. Maybe, maybe bigger than a horse. It's pretty big. Pretty big thing. Bigger than a Kelpie? I suppose, because that's the size of a horse. Mm. Yeah. You have a cat. I got two. I have a cat. You have one. I do have a cat. Between us, there are three cats. They're pr- she's a pretty big cat. She's like 18 pounds. Really? She's huge. She's Gigantic. bigger than Gus and RJ. That's kind of crazy. giant. But this episode has a lot to do with, as you can imagine, a cat. Another name for this thing is the Wampus Beast. Mm. Or I heard Cherokee Cat. So if you're a cat lover in this episode, you're going to be feline fine today. Yeah. And I I can't tell, based off my research, if it's a good thing or a bad thing. So we'll have to talk about that in the back half as well. Well, good or bad in itself. I mean, I know everybody's into the Marvel movies now, but the world's a little bit more gray than good or bad. This absolutely falls into that kind of category because it's, you don't know where to put it. It's like the lead character in the TV show You. Like, one episode, you really like him, and the next, you're like, wow, he's pretty terrible. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to go ahead and and go with your word, because I've never watched that show. Your wife watched that show. Yes, Stephanie was very into it. Not my cup of tea. But, Tyler, are you ready to talk about the Wampus Cat? Let's do it. So, the Wampus Cat is notably found in the mountains of Appalachia. Appalachia? I mess it up every time. You gotta just think of an apple getting thrown at you. Apple at you. The Wampus Cat is a unique creature. It's deadly. It's devastating. It's full of power, and it's large, and it's terrifying. Devastating, large, terrifying. Good adjectives. Definitely leaning towards bad right now. I'm gonna have a radar this entire episode. It started in the middle. It's leaning a little toward bad right now. So this thing's kind of like a mix between a wolf... And a big cat. <laughs> what? So if a cat brings a mouse on your front step, what does this? It brings a buffalo. You wake up, you open your door. <laughs> you can't open your door. You literally, you have to put your slippers on. You, you, you use your whole shoulder to shove open this door. And then you see this big old buffalo carcass with these teeth marks on it. And you know that the wampus cat was like, you're my friend. <laughs> you know, it's funny. There's a couple stray cats that live by me. That bring like, you buffalo? Well, yesterday I saw on my porch there was a, a chipmunk body that they left for us. Which yeah. Was, which was, I was like, that's sweet. So what do you do for them? I do nothing for them. You I should them give them something. Porch. You should find one of the fairies in your house and leave it outside for it. <laughs> anyway, back to the wampus cat. It is said to have varying heights from that of larger than a gorilla or to about the size of a miniature pony. All right, so you just said last episode that the average person or many people have trouble identifying animals. Yes. This is going to be all over the, the table. Un, un, oh, yeah. Unless you're like, it's like 1 60th of a football field, because people measure in football fields. I don't, like, miniature pony, there's a whole section of the world that's like, I don't know. And like an adult gorilla. I think there's one particular animal that this animal is confused for often, and that is a cougar. See, I... I, I don't know, like, it's, I said it last time, if you put a leopard next to a jaguar, next to a puma, next to a cougar. Cougar is a mountain lion, so a mountain lion. I like the idea of not like a big, like, not like a, a lion where it looks right. I want a house cat that you just grab the right corner of it and you blow it up and then it's just like a big house cat. Like a big old, big old tabby. Imagine that cat walking and its stomach just <laughs> <laughs> swaying back and forth. You know what cat I would like to have one day, possibly? 
I like to have a hairless cat, a sphinx cat. I I find them very interesting. Imagine because my cats lay with the they lay around my head at yeah. night, like they, yeah. they they wrap their bodies around my head. Imagine waking up to just this feeling of this skinless <laughs> thing around your face, and you're sweaty because it's hot, like a month in Ohio, and you go to move your face away, and it has that slight little separation between your face and the naked cat. You do have to put sunscreen on them, I found out. Because of windows? Yeah, because they lay in the sun. Hmm. Which I thought was very cute. And you do have to bathe them more regu- regularly. They're not just... You don't just have a tan, a good-looking, fine, tan <laughs> cat. That tan is so... Is that tan... Is that cat doing something outside? Is that cat a farmer? <laughs> Imagine a cat with a farmer's tan. Oh, yes. That's so cute. <laughs> Back, I'm, I'm done with my sphinx cat tangent. Uh, I don't know if I said this already. It's said to either walk on its hind legs, or it's also said to walk on its three pairs of legs. What? Including the tail? Are we are we getting no. inappropriate here? No, no, no. The wampus cat is said to have front legs, middle legs, what? and hind legs. That's just creepy. I don't like that. Yeah, it's got six legs. Or it walks on two legs. Have you... Does does Artemis have a little bit of a tummy? Oh, she got a huge tummy. Yeah, so Gus has a tummy, and sometimes Gus will, like, try and get to something higher up. So he'll, like, stand up and put his paws out, but it looks like he's standing straight up. And he just has this little tummy. And it's so funny, because I imagine, like, putting jean shorts on him. <laughs> and, like, so Gus, just white cat, standing upright with this these little jean shorts on him. Like, little John Cena jean shorts, and there's a little tummy hanging over. I don't know why. It's the cutest thing ever. Like a little muffin top? Yeah, little, yeah, 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 yeah. Thankfully, Artemis is black, so she is uh, naturally slimming. That's true. Yeah. People that have seen the wampus cat say that it looks like a black panther or a cougar or a mountain lion on steroids. On steroids. Yeah, so it's really muscular. It's big. And a lot of reports of it being jet black. Oh my gosh! You imagine a family who has like uh, kids and stuff, and they have like a, a a jungle gym and stuff in the background or their backyard, and uh, they walk outside and they look inside their sandbox, and it's just this like table sized turd in their sandbox. <laughs> like, what the hell? Oh, t- a table? It's a slab. <laughs> There's horns in it. I don't know what. I always find that interesting about now, like big cats. Like, where do they go to the bathroom? Just like in the field, or like the, do they? The world is their litter box. Look for something like sandy. I don't know. They sneak in people's houses at night and use the little litter boxes. So the wampus cat is said to have a howl, a shriek that is is scary. It's like a scary like shriek. Meow. It's said to rip through the forest and it sends terror in the hearts of those that hear it. And I think it's. Have you heard a cougar shriek? Yeah. Not, not personally, yes. but like a recording of it. Yeah, we actually listened to a cougar shriek in William's episode, episode six. I thought so too. And that's what it made me think of. Did you hear it? The wampus cat shriek? Yeah. No, I haven't heard an example of that. Okay. But the way it was described, it made me think of this. Gotcha, okay. I didn't know if somebody claimed to have found it Mm-mm. or heard it. No, there's not a lot of um, visuals of it. Hmm. Hopefully, they're not too embarrassed about their middle legs. This one will be hidden. I think it makes them go faster, you know? I would stumble. They're, okay, so this is a, a little bit of a, an aside into North North mythology. North? North. Norse. Norse? Yeah, like okay. Odin. Odin has, I think, two horses. Listen, I'm not an expert on this. This is this is Charlie's maybe kind of correct corner. I think he has two horses. It's said to have eight legs. Yes. Yeah, eight legs. Because it goes fast. Okay. Yeah. By the way, producer Ben called us out. He's like, why are you guys talking about the Twin City? That's Minnesota. We were talking about Wisconsin last week. Did I mess up? We were talking about the Twin Cities, Mm -hmm. which is in Minnesota. Oh, I was just the wrong city. What? Wrong state. Green Bay is in Wisconsin. Green Bay and Milwaukee. Yeah, okay. We got to fact check ourselves every now and then. (laughs) Got to stay humble. Well, we were both time out because I I brought up the twins. Yeah. The baseball team. I thought I I mixed I mixed up my states. We Those can't two? all be good at geography like me. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I don't remember the name of Odin's horse. There is a name for it. Hopefully someone will know it. But I think it's very interesting that there's these animals that exist in mythologies 
with multiple legs and not in town, just like a front and a back. And this is the connection there. Because, you know, Norsemen were said to land in America before anybody else that were not there already. Maybe the Wampus Cat was like a house cat that got out and then he started living in the wild with their six legs. Mm, like it like it became feral. Yeah. I, mm, that doesn't match the mythology on it, but maybe. So this creature is said to hunt in the mountains of Appalachia, found in eastern Tennessee, western Virginia, southern Kentucky, and states that border the Appalachian Mountains. However, there are other reports from Florida, New York, uh, California, and possibly even the UK, which is really weird because I was watching the monster quest on the Wampus Cat completely took place in the United Kingdom. Wow. And I, I was like reading, I was like, why is this taking place over there? Because it didn't make sense to the mythology of the Wampus Cat. I'm still not sure. Maybe the, there's like the Chupacabra. Maybe there's like the UK Wampus Cat and Maybe. then the, the US Wampus Cat. I don't know, but like it, it really didn't make sense to me because it seems to be a very American cryptid. Well, I mean, there's a lot of people think the office is from America, you know, so maybe it's like the <laughs> office. The same thing, yeah. It's just, yeah. Oh. All right. It's just the British version of the Wampus Cat? Yeah. It's just Richard Gervais in a, <laughs> in a big cat suit. <laughs> He's like, I love my rolling cats. Oh, no. Ian McKellen, Taylor Swift, they're all over there in, in cat costumes. Cat costumes. It's just, th- we already busted the, what it, whether or not it's believable. I will say, though, now that you mentioned Taylor Swift, it is leaning a little bit more towards good. What is the... the... My meter. My good versus bad meter. Oh, I see. I see. I forgot about the meter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's on my HUD system. You can't see. The mythology of the Wampus Cat is not necessarily pinned down, but it is a Native American legend of the Cherokee Nation. At least, the like I said, the version I'm talking about. I don't know about the UK version. Imagining one person studying the Wampus Cat. And like, let's just put a pin in it for now. I don't like that phrase. Put a pin in it? Yeah. Makes me think of pinning bugs. My sister does that. No. The Wampus Cat might be familiar to those who are very familiar with Harry Potter. Because the Ilvermorny House, or the Ilvermorny School in North America, has four houses. One of those houses is called the Wampus Cat. And it's associated with, like, warriors, because it's like a... Like a you know, like a lion kind of for Gryffindor, Wampus Cat for America. And I found that very I didn't find it interesting because there's not a lot of like You didn't find it interesting. I, uh, like I knew it. I no, I don't think it's very that interesting. I think that JK Rowling picked pretty lesser known cryptids mm. for the American school. Cause I think I think all the houses are cryptids. Oh really? Mm-hmm. There's another one called a Pukwudgie. Oh. Which would have been, if I was going to do the Wampus Cat and another creature in one episode, it would have been a Pukwudgie. A Pukwudgie. She's like, Pukwudgie's fine, as long as we know its gender. <laughs> <laughs> as long, and it sticks to it. <laughs> okay, I'll leave it there. So, like I said, it is a Cherokee cryptid creature, like Skinwalker is Navajo. Yeah. Yeah, this is Cherokees. Yes. So, this is the first legend, because I saw two accepted legends. This is the first one. Bear with me, it's a little long. There was an evil spirit outside of the village of Etoa that was tormenting the people and children in their dreams. It was Ewa. Ewa was the demon of madness. The elders men decided that someone would have to take on Ewa. A brave warrior was chosen to fight. As he left, the council decided to grant him a weapon and blessings to aid him. After several weeks of not having heard from him, One night, he ran back into the village, screaming and clutching his face. His face was disfigured. His wife knew that he would be changed forever after this, not able to do anything. She was angry and wanted revenge. She went to the council and was given a booger mask. So the booger mask is a taxidermy bobcat mask, and it was magic. She was also given a special black paste to hide her scent. The council said the only way to win against Ewa was to surprise it. After days of staking in the forest, she found the spirit walking upstream. She saw its monstrous form take a drink from the mountain springs. She crept closer and closer, and then she sprung on the creature. Awa was so startled by the powers of the booger mask, it made the creature tear itself apart. The woman ran as soon as she saw that she had triumphed. 
and the legend is that the woman still inhabits the spirit of the Wampus Cat and protects her people in the land. So that's the first legend of the Wampus Cat, that it was this wife taking revenge for her husband. All right, I got now next to my good meter, I got my BS meter. Uh, yeah, well, okay, so it's, it's, it's supposed to be the protective spirit, is what I'm trying to say with that story. I like that story because it's like a protection kind so of thing. So is Awa the Wampus Cat, or did she become the Wampus Cat? She became the Wampus Cat. She became the Wampus Cat. Awa was destroyed. Okay. I don't know how. She had to shock it. She snuck up behind and said, the Jets won last week. <laughs> and I went, oh my god. Yeah. And they beat the Browns. It was less surprising. Less surprising. He's like, mm. It was like that moment in the scary movie where they pop back up. Because yeah, they remembered yeah. it was the Browns. And then, then she took her booger mask and just shoved it in its I don't know. Face. She just ran away. Know. She just ran away. It was scared. So you just have to shock it and it's, it's done. I guess so. It just started tearing itself apart. Yes. The how the matter of how it was destroyed was very unclear. I did look other places to find it. <laughs> it bet its life savings on Browns plus two. It's just it's like I don't I have no <laughs> will to terrible live bet. It was a terrible, terrible bet. So do you want to hear the next legend? If I said no, uh, would we just move on or no, I'm just kidding. I do want to hear it. You just asked me, so I'm curious what would happen if I said no. If you said no, I guess we just end the podcast. Ever. Well, We're done. to believe the bizarre. Goodbye. That's it. This is um, where we end. Yeah. So the next legend goes like this. There was a woman who was married to a hunter. Occasionally the woman's husband and her husband's friends and other hunters would go into the woods for long periods of time. They'd be gone for weeks hunting. At least that's what they said. She was so curious about what they did in the woods, she one day decided to follow them. She decided to disguise herself with a cougar skin. She wrapped it around her and she walked into the forest. Sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> terrible idea. She finally came across the men's fire, and they were dancing and practicing dark magic that was forbidden from the tribe and telling odd stories, old stories. She was so enthralled that she kept creeping closer and closer to the men's circle until finally she was discovered by the firelight. The men chased and dragged her back into the circle, and as a punishment for her discrepancies, the tribe's medicine man cast a spell or a curse upon the woman and the cougar skin she was wearing in disguise wrapped around her, and therefore, she became the Wampus Cat. So did they know it was her? Yeah. Okay. It's funny, like, because it's it's, it was set up so that she thought they were going hunting, but there's also this, but that's not what they were doing. But it's like they're acting, acting all manly, like they're hunting and stuff. She, like, wanders in the woods, and in the middle of the woods, there's just a giant eagle. <laughs> and she sees her husband and their friends at self-checkout with some, like, beef and some chicken. They got their Starbucks in their hand. But they come back like warriors. Like, ah, oh, <laughs> I caught this with my bare hands. It was on sale. I mean, I saw it <laughs> sailing down the river. <laughs> Giant eagle. <laughs> yeah, so they, they knew. They knew what they did. I I like, I mean, not like as in I, I think it's, for some reason I like story two better. Maybe it was just easier to follow. I with. think so, too. It was more enthralling. It was also clearer. Yeah. I like story two better as well. Although it makes it... That, for me, makes it unclear if it is good or evil or neutral. I'm well, I, sure. And I think the second story definitely makes it where that makes sense. Because she wasn't inherently bad, but she might be vengeful because of what happened to her. Absolutely. Yeah. With that being said... That's that's all the backstory there is for the Wampus Cat. So let's move into Encounters. Listen, guys, I know it's been a minute since I've talked about trying to get to 8% body fat, but that deadline is coming up. I've been hitting the gym, too, and trying to get in better shape as well. And that is why we've both been trying AG1 Athletic Greens. I started taking AG1 because with my other, quote, protein powders, I wasn't seeing results. Exactly. But with a single scoop of AG1, you're getting 75 high-quality minerals, vitamins, whole food source superfoods, and probiotics. Well, that's fine. But let's talk about the real selling point. It actually tastes good. and isn't all grating like some of the other protein powders. My suggestion, just add it to your routine, right? Like you wake up, start listening to that new Believing the Bazaar episode while you're making your AG1. And before we even start diving into the topic, 
You've consumed a shake that has less than one gram of sugar, supports mental clarity and alertness without any nasty chemicals. So essentially, it's like a life hack. And don't just take our word for it. Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews. And on top of all that, for every purchase, Athletic Green donates to organizations that help get nutritious food to kids in need, like No Kid Hungry. Skip the supplements and the dozens of various pills. You can reclaim your health and arm your immune system with daily nutrition. All it takes is just one scoop of AG1 and a cup of water every day. That's it. Still in the fence? To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. That's right. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com forward slash emerging. Again, that is athleticgreens.com forward slash emerging to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. I've only got two encounters. One is from YouTube and the other is from Reddit. I I have them ordered the other way, but I'm going to read the YouTube encounter first. Quote, the big cats are still around. Most of them are cougars. The deer population just exploded in numbers, so the cats are coming back too. I have not told but a few people about what I'll attempt to tell now because of the ridicule and being afraid of being thought of a liar. We live in the country near the high ridge line of eastern Tennessee. One spring, I remembered my great uncle telling my mother that he heard a wampus cat the night before. He was, quote, pure country and not prone to raise false alarm. He lived on the farm since 1922. I roamed the woods freely at a young age, I think from about nine, but my parents kept me close for a while. My dad took it serious enough that when I was doing chores at the barn or cutting kindling after dark, he would show up with a lantern and walk me home. Fast forward to 1973, I was a sheriff's patrol deputy, same county I grew up in. A midnight shift near a large dairy farm. I saw a black cat cross the road at 75 feet in front of my car. It looked to be about 65 or 70 pounds, with a tail almost as long as the body. Very graceful. It took about two strides to get across the road. Not a full run, but just loping along. I stopped and put the spotlight where I thought the animal would be. I could hear it moving in the tall grass nearby. I just caught one glimpse of it, and it was gone. You can imagine the ridicule and taunting me and my partner would have received if we had told any about this. If we had told anybody about this. And that's the end of his quote. So this next encounter. It's six years old, whatever that means. It's the Wampus Cat from North Carolina. That's the, Is that the site? or? Yeah. Okay. That's the, okay, cool. Cool. It starts like this. Quote, I am mentally well, <laughs> moderately successful, young wife, and a mother in the deep south, on the edge of the coast and have been in this beach town my whole life. You get a few miles west from the beach, and you're immediately in the country. My mother's side had lived here as far back as memory serves. My father is a Sioux, whose mother moved him here as a child away from the reservation. Since I can remember, my mother's side of the family has had run-ins with the Wampus Cat. It followed her, and now it follows me, and my family. Always has. We've gotten used to the Wampus Cat. We just expect to hear it when we move to a new house. Where the seasons are changing, we find ourselves in the moment emotionally weak. When my mother had a rough day being bullied in middle school back in the 80s, she was crying and riding her bike home down a country dirt road. The sun is setting, but it's not dark out yet. Behind her, she hears the shriek. I heard it before, and it sounds like when an eagle screams, but with that gurgling gutturalness of a cougar roar. So she turns around, and she sees a huge creature dark matted fur and a stance like a gorilla standing when it walks on its knuckles. Back legs crunched a bit, chest out and head up, and supported by the arms of the knuckles. She turned around and races her bike all the way home. She told her mom what she saw, and she calmly says, that's a wampus cat. They've never hurt us. They just like to spook you. And that was that. So I grew up with, so I grew up with a native father superstitious as hell, and practically jumping under the bed to hide when he heard the wampus cat scream in the backyard some nights, while my mother and grandmother just kind of acknowledge, oh, it's the cat again. And I have gone my whole life with this as completely normal, 
Even when I got married, my husband was out in the woods with me. We hear that scream, see the leaves on the forest floor kick up as it stalks us. Never coming too close, and have to realize that to the people who didn't grow up in my town, this was a terrifying experience. To me, it's like when you occasionally see a cardinal in the trees. A bit different than the day-to-day, but nothing life-changing. My closest encounter was one night in high school. My friend and I, and her boyfriend, were sitting on the front porch enjoying the nighttime salt air and the lightning bugs. A huge gorilla-sized, extremely hairy animal runs up to the front porch and screeches like hell opens up. Now, I'm semi-used to this critter, but I don't want it five feet in front of me. So we go to her bedroom, and for about an hour, we hear it stalking back and forth underneath her window about ten feet down, growling and spitting and screaming, rolling around in the foliage, just being pesky and grumpy. Finally, it wanders off, all is quiet, and we fall asleep. Every once in a while, I'll still hear it. It's just life here. This town is extremely haunted. I've grown up a few miles from Fort Fisher Battle, ground and many historic and tragic places. I have too many unnatural encounters with all sorts of things to put one post, but that's it. That's really long, jumbled, confusing, and probably a bit boring compared to the other posts, but this is my experience with the not-so-talked-about creature that is just part of my life. End quote. I was at Fort Fisher when I went to uh, North Carolina. Oh, yeah? Did you didn't, see ghosts? ghost? didn't see a uh, ghost or this cat. Would you like to discuss this? Yes. This is where we like to stop the episode, and we like to thank the people as of this moment who are newly subscribed to our Patreon. Christopher, Strat, Laney, Joe, Holly... Gilbert and Kelly. Thank you all so much for jumping on board. And there's so many fun things on our Patreon. And we just, we would like to make sure you know what you're in for. So, Tyler, can you just tell Holly what she can expect? What's up, Holly? We have tons of bonus content. We love doing it. Lots of bonus segments and free things and audio files and wallpapers. We do fun segments like Do You Believe the Bazaar? where we get told creepy stories, some are real, some are fake, and we have to guess which are which by producer Ben. Social media responses. Every Monday on social media, we ask questions. In the Patreon, we respond to your responses and tell you what we think. We also do interviews. We give away t-shirts that you can literally only get by being in the Patreon. You get shouted out on this here Patreon segment. Lots of fun stuff. We're bringing back theatrical readings. Because of y'all, because of the support we're getting on Patreon, Charlie is literally getting a tattoo this Saturday. Yeah. So look for that. It's happening. There will be a video later, but there will be small little live cuts of it. I'm super excited. You're going to have Believe in the Bazaar forever inked on you. Oh, boy. Yes, I am. Yes. Very exciting. So if you like the podcast and it's Tuesday's gone, you're, you've listened to the entire library of episodes we have and you want a little bit more, well, there's a lot of bit more over on Patreon. Definitely check out the Instagram and join us for the lives because that's going to be a lot of fun. That being said, let's get back to talking about the Wampus Cat. So Tyler, I don't know how you feel about this yeah. particular thing. I feel a certain way about it, but let's talk about it first. Sure. It's it's huge. It's a giant, right? Or maybe it's not that big. It it it's not as giant as you might think. Or right. at least it f- doesn't feel like it took a few steps to cross the road. Like, okay. Mhm. It 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 do- it doesn't feel quite like it's the size of like a truck or a house, you know. No. It, the the officer said it was sixty to seventy pounds. That's like one third of a one fourth of a deer. That's the size of my my dog. Yeah, yeah. Which is he's not a giant dog either. No, he's a um, big dog, but not like it's significantly less than a deer. <laughs> yeah, no one reported seeing all the legs, which I'm a little disappointed about. Not to overstep my thoughts and and maybe where you're at. I think the folklore and what people are seeing are very different. I agree. I I agree a lot. Because there's not a lot of consistency with the Wampus Cat that I've seen. 
like one person says it walks on its hind legs. One person says it kind of jogs along. Uh, its colors are different. Behavior is different. Yeah. It, um, it feels like there was folklore about it and it just kept growing and growing. Like the, the meat, the myth of the Wampus cat just kept growing and growing and growing. Yeah. It, it seems like these people are seeing big cats and they are probably are big cats, like a cougar, mountain lion, something like that. So I believe that they're seeing big cats, but I don't think it's like. I don't think it's like a cryptid. I think it's kind of like wishful thinking in a way. Like, like when the, the Cherokee tribe had the, the legend, the lore of the, of the Wampus cat, it was almost like putting this energy into this creature. Right. And that's, it's a nice thought, but I don't think that's what people are seeing. Like, I agree with you. I don't think they're seeing this, this Wampus cat. I think that's more of a, of a myth. Yeah, I think it's it's kind of like in the unicorn realm where it's like everybody knows what you're talking. Well, not that everybody knows about the Wampus Cat, but like when you say unicorn, everybody knows what you're talking about, but most people don't think it's real. Right. There's like the idea, the 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 mythos, mythos or whatever it is of a, of a unicorn. Wampus Cat, I think it is. Uh, I think people are really seeing these things. I think they're re- they're actually seeing big cats. And I also think kind of like what we talked about last episode, where it's like you see something, you panic, and you start recharacterizing mm-hmm. it. And um, there is a there is a possibility for cougars to a get very dirty, and that's why they 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 show up black. Or I think genetically, I, not I think genetically, I know genetically it is rare, but they can be black as well. Listen, I am not, I'm not saying that I'm an NFL expert. I like to weave in a little football here and there, but let me just use my knowledge and try and put two and two together. Where did the last story take place? Tennessee. The last one? Oh, no, Carolina. You're right. Yeah. What is the name of their football team? The Panthers? Yes. Uh, What if she's just seeing a panther? Yeah. I think they're seeing real things. I think they're legitimate cats. I think the folklore is folklore. I go unbelievable. I... Unfortunately, I I 100% agree with you. I don't believe it. I I don't I I think it's it's a nice story from the Cherokee tribe, but I think it's unbelievable as well. It's fun and honestly, so I don't think it's good or bad cuz I don't think it's real. Um <laughs> if we go off the second I if we go off the the folklore, I think it's neutral. I think it's just people that aren't bad that are put in a in a situation where that could cause resentment and, you know, vengeful nature which would be perceived as bad but i don't think it in itself is bad but that is the folklore by itself otherwise i think it's just a wild animal like a panther or a cougar who's just trying to eat and guess they get that meow mix you know i agree i think this is just a panther or a cougar there's lots of names for mountain lion but that's what i think it is yep i agree entirely and there's nothing wrong with seeing a big old cat around doesn't mean it has to be a cryptid it can just be a nice old big cat right So thank you for joining us on this episode of Believing the Bazaar, where we have talked about the Wampus Cat, which is not something I'd, I'm, I've heard in passing before, because I'm fairly familiar with Harry Potter, because I'm a big old nerd. But I didn't know where it came from. And that was nice to learn the lore of it, you know? Yeah. That's what's always nice about these lesser known cryptids, is that you find out interesting lore from cultures you didn't necessarily know. Absolutely. Um, just because we don't think it's real doesn't mean it's not interesting. It doesn't Absolutely. mean it's not worth talking about. And anytime we can talk about cats, I'm always down. Because I liked, what was, <laughs> yes. didn't Gryla have a cat? Gryla? Yeah. From what? Um, Gryla. Oh, oh, the troll. Yeah. Didn't she have a cat? Oh, she didn't have a cat. What was that cat? It was just a big old Christmas cat. Yeah. There was a name for it. I I've can't remember. can't remember his name either. The Christmas cat, yeah. Uh, uh, that's what I was. He was thinking. a giant. Cat. That now that was a big cat. This is just favorite. like a. This is a cat that eats two dinners. You know what I mean? This is yeah. a bigger cat. No, um, that was a giant cat. But anytime we're talking about cats, I'm down. I like dogs too, but I am I at heart, I'm a cat person. And if you at heart like this episode and like this podcast, there is a way to let us know. You can go to Apple Podcasts, leave five stars, give us a review. Oh, man, that's great. Let us know what you're thinking. Or if you're on Spotify, just hit that five-star rating and keep on moving along. 
And if you want to join our community, we don't talk about it very much, but we do have a Discord that is free to join. Believe the Bazaar. Yep. If you want to jump on in, talk to people who are like-minded, I, I recommend it. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of fun people in there already. So come on, join us. And if you want to talk about this episode, on Tuesday, there will be an extended discussion on Twitch. Easy to find on Twitch. Believe in the Bazaar. That's us. 8 p.m. Pretty much every Tuesday, unless something major happens. But I would say 99% of the time, every Tuesday, 8 p.m. on Twitch, Believe in Bazaar, we dive into these topics way more, listen to your opinions, talk about them. It's a good time. Not and uh, we go on tangents. Tangents but those are, are the fun. best. Those are I fun. enjoy the tangents. Maybe because I bring them up a lot. <laughs> but I do truly enjoy tangents. But anyway, thank you everybody so much for listening. We appreciate you. As always, I'm Tyler. And I'm Charlie. And catch us next week on Believing the Bizarre. Podcast. As bizarre as you are.